talking a lot more recently again about Harry Hooten and anarcho-technocracy I discovered his ideas and his work and some of his pamphlets and things when I thought I'd come up with the term anarcho-technocracy independently and went looking and while a lot of these ideas need updating it is striking in reading some of his pamphlets and works just how prescient he was in a lot of ways about the technological issues and challenges that we face today. And for me, someone who is starkly rationalist, but also artistic, some of what he says really helps to bridge the divide between those two disciplines. Take this example, an excerpt from Problems and Flowers Are Fade, from Things You See When You Haven't Got a Gun, which was a self-published booklet of his in 1943. He was obscure, he was an activist, he was a poet, all things that meant I should never have encountered him in a lot of ways, but nonetheless I did. In philosophy and art, humanity is no longer worthy of our inquiry or representation. Philosophy as an attention to human problems must yield to science dealing with mechanical masses of non-human material. The questions of medicine, hygiene and psychology are being relegated gradually to physiology. Art no longer attempts to mirror man or the things in nature as seen by man, but depicts unrecognisable patterns which are like nothing on earth. Lines, cubes, inhuman designs. The art of representing visible likeness is relegated to the science of photography. The philosophies and arts of one age are the exact sciences of the next. Philosophy searching for what is true and art searching for what is new may be discovered as being always out in front of society, in the vanguard, while the sciences and industries, the more utilitarian and moralistic activities, may be considered as forming the main body of the army, moving into the positions the spearhead establishes. This division of labour is rarely seen operating on a large scale, but viewing the world as a whole, it will be seen that the humanism which has inspired so many of the great philosophers and artists of the past is a goal attained. We have arrived at humanity. There is work for science, enormous work, but the vanguard has to look to new goals ahead. <laughs> Grimm gave a big yawn and settled down to sleep. And of course when Grimm goes to sleep, all of his friends go to sleep too. The people on the internet were just text on a screen, the collectibles were just cheap plastic tat, and the books were just elaborate sandwiches made of wood and paper. Even Grimm himself, once he was asleep, was just an old saggy goth twat, baggy and a bit loose at the seams, and nobody loved him. <laughs>